someday all of this, everything will be gone. The earth will be swallowed by the sun, the nuclear fire of the sun will fade away, and even the very atoms that we are composed of will decay and disappear. Nowhere in this universe, nothing that we see will last forever. Bummer. When that last spark of energy dissipates into nothingness, the universe as we know it will cease to exist. This is called the heat death of the universe, and we can thank the second law of thermodynamics for that. The second law of thermodynamics, put simply, is the tendency of a closed system to go from order to disorder. Our universe, as far as we can tell, is all there is and all there will be, the ultimate closed system. Right now, it's in a highly ordered state. We have trees, animals, people, planets, galaxies, and the energy to put these processes in motion. But it is slowly winding down. And someday, in the distant future, the energy of the universe will become so diffuse that work, any kind of movement or change, will be impossible. The universe will be dark and cold and essentially non-existent. If you were somehow able to transport yourself to the end of the universe, there'd be nothing to see because there would be no light, not a single photon. You'd be floating in an endless void. How long do we have until the end? A very long time. Right now we're living in the Stelliferous Era, the Age of Stars. And this began about 14 billion years ago when hydrogen and helium atoms were able to form stable bonds, thus allowing star formation. In our time, most energy production comes from stars, and we see it every time we look up in the sky. But there will come a day when the last star is born. There will not be enough gas left over to form new stars, and all that will be left will be their corpses, dim white dwarfs, brown dwarfs, and black holes. This will be the beginning of the degenerate era, and it won't begin for another quadrillion years. In this era, the last remnants of the stars will slowly exhaust their energy, solar systems and galaxies will cease to exist, and even protons will decay and disappear, taking matter as we know it with them. What we think of when we imagine the universe will be totally gone, but the universe will still be there, just in the form of black holes. That's when we'll enter the black hole era, 10 to the 40th years from now. That's 10 with 40 zeros after it. The only significant objects left in the universe are black holes. But even they are not permanent. Black holes evaporate, leaving behind massless particles like photons. After the last black hole has evaporated away, we will enter the dark era. Space will be mostly empty. Photons and a few other particles will still be flying around, but so diffuse they will hardly ever encounter each other. The universe will be in a very low state of energy. Hardly anything will ever happen again. Ladies and gentlemen, we have reached maximum entropy, the heat death of the universe. Depending on which assumptions we make now, the universe might never achieve heat death. We're not even sure how long it takes a proton to decay, and it might not even happen at all. The universe might just expand to a point where it tears itself apart, and it might, given enough time, return to its current ordered state. Austrian physicist Ludwig Boltzmann described our universe like a deck of cards, where the deck initially starts out in a highly ordered state, but as the cards are shuffled, it becomes increasingly disordered. But if you continue to shuffle the cards, it will eventually return to its original, ordered state. Given a long enough timeline, our dead, empty universe could spontaneously regenerate itself, causing a new Big Bang and starting the process all over again. The probability of this happening is mind-bogglingly unlikely. But if the heat death does occur, time scales become essentially infinite. And if time is infinite, basically anything and everything can happen. The spontaneous resurrection of the universe isn't even the weirdest implication of Boltzmann's suggestion. Boltzmann hypothesized that our current low entropy universe might be a random fluctuation within what is normally a high entropy, chaotic universe, devoid of matter, life, and energy. Like shuffling a deck of cards and it coming out in order. Not impossible, and given a large amount of time, it'll happen from time to time. But even more common than an entire universe popping into existence would be a single entity that only believes the universe exists. A Boltzmann brain. This would be a mind, possibly an actual brain, that appears out of nowhere in the nothingness of a dead universe, complete with false memories and a detailed hallucination of a highly ordered, low entropy universe with planets, trees, and people and daytime talk shows. While this situation might sound preposterous, it might actually be more probable. On an infinite time scale, where anything and everything is possible, Random, spontaneously generated brains could be statistically more common than universes full of planets and billions of real brains. 
So carpe diem, folks. Don't let life pass you by because there's a chance that your entire existence could be the figment of a disembodied brain that came into existence only moments ago and could disappear at any second. Thanks for watching. We have more entropy flavored videos coming up. If you're confused what entropy is, go to our previous video, there's a scientist in it, or move on to our next video in our increasingly chaotic playlist. How do you think the universe is gonna end? Is it gonna be a heat death or a big rip? Or maybe some giant robots will come and turn off the computer that's simulating the universe? Or maybe something involving dinosaurs? Well, let us know in a video response titled Entropy for the Good Stuff, and we'll take a look at them. Nothing lasts forever, but if you want to help the good stuff survive its metaphorical heat death, consider contributing to its fundraising project, Subbable. Uh, everybody who contributes is eligible for an awesome perk, like a poster or a soundtrack of all the music we use. But do it now, before it's too late. Thanks. That's really pretty.